We're on in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, welcome to Moe's Cooking Hour, where you can learn how to cook and to be a man. First lesson in cooking, if you want to be a real man, take off your shirt when you cook. Try not to spit when you talk. And if you can keep your hair out of a bun and still not get any in the food, you're a man. What we've done so far is cleaned out last week's spaghetti out of the crock pot. Because most men only have one crock pot. Make sure you don't throw the spaghetti away. Or throw it out in the weed because a deer could eat it and vomit it up. So, I took the spaghetti and put it in a gladware box and stuck it in the fridge. Follow me. After I put the spaghetti in the gladware top, I couldn't find a lid. So you gotta cover it with saran wrap. That keeps the germs from the other food, and the flavoring too, all sealed inside of here. But the germs not sealed inside of here. The germs are outside of here. But if you're a man, you already knew that. Okay. Oh, as I'm in the fridge, I'm noticing something. I need these baby cut carrots for the man roast that we're cooking today for our families while they're at church. I'll go to church later, because I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. Michael, what about potatoes? Oh yeah, my father was just asking me about the potatoes. Always make sure that you have the recipes here before you start your cooking show. Or before you start cooking. Because you could mess yourself up real bad if you started cooking a roast and you ended up not having your potatoes. And if your onions look like this, because they've been sitting in your nasty cupboard for too long, don't use them. So, so far, what we have done is we've washed our hands and made sure that all the snot was out of our nose. The way I did that was I used hand soap. I like to use soft soap brand. They make nice flavors, like citrus extracts. That makes my hands smell lemony fresh. So, what we did was I have my mom's old recipe that she wrote on an envelope by an inspiration of the Lord one day. And what it said was put the roast in the pot. So what my mom did was she stuck the roast that came in a package like this inside of the fridge. So I went in the fridge and I took the roast out of the package. I carefully did it and tried not to get my fingers all over the roast because they're tiny little antibacterial macros that are inside of the roast and they can kill you. So what I did was I took these prongs. And after I unloosed the leash of them, I snapped up the rocks and I stuck it inside of the crock pot. Once inside of the crock pot, I put three cups of water at my mom's request. It doesn't matter what temperature of water you use to begin with, because this is a crock pot and it will roast the roast at its own temperature. So, after I put the three cups of water, I put onions. Oh, one more thing that my director is reminding me of is you have to use a cup to put the water inside. And then I would recommend using metal cookware because it's manly and because you can protect yourself from villains. Do I have any volunteers from the audience that want to be villainous? Okay, you, step over here. Approach me, villainous. Cook! And he's dead. That's it. One flop for my metal one cup cookware. And he's dead. So I would highly recommend that you get metal cookware for your women. Because they can use it to kill things with it and then cook them with it. So what I did was I went over to the sink and I filled this up. So we'll pretend like there's a sink right here. And I stuck it under the faucet and then turned it on and went until the cup was full of water. And you have to make sure that the water is completely level with the cup because that's how cups are made. They don't make it bigger than a cup and they don't make it smaller than a cup. And then we dump three times inside of here. Three different filling times as well. You must fill the cup three times and empty the cup three times. Once I was done with that, I put onion soup mix made by Lipton, the same makers of that wonderful tea. 
and I put the onion soup mix inside of the pot rocks. After that, my mom said to use potatoes, but I can't find any. So as you already saw me take these carrots out of the fridge, I would recommend freshly cut baby carrots, because then you don't have to cut the carrots by yourself and put yourself in danger of slicing off your fingers. So you just gently dump the carrots inside, all around the big slab of roast meat that you have in here. This will make for a delectable and delicious and nutritious meal. Be careful not to put the bag inside of the roast when you're doing this. And always pray over your food. So if everyone will shut up and listen while we pray for our food. Lord, I thank you so much for the cross and for your death that brings us life. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for the people that are going to eat this food that stay faithfully by my side and love me through the good and through the bad. I pray that this food would man them up and give them power to do your will to advance the gospel into the whole world. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. So once you bless the food, it's good to do that while you're cooking, because then the blessings go right into the food while it's raw, and then it can be cooked right around the blessing. That's something that my mom taught me as well. So then, I already said you don't want to use onions like this, because these onions are growing, and they look really funny. So after searching your cupboards diligently for more onions and not finding any, you can go fake and use chopped onion. Cebola picada. As it say in Mexico. Another manly thing for people to do. Yes, Dad? No good onions left. No good onions makes your dad real sad. That's another reason you want metal cookware. Because then you can find something hard and metal, cover your head with it if things start flying at you, cover your heart with it if people start shooting at you. So you can take these chopped onions to make it a little more oniony. Sometimes there's a seal inside of the chopped onions. Just like this one. No onion will come out if the seal is on. So what you're going to have to do is unscrew the cap. Try and flex while you do it so you get a good workout while you're cooking. Now that you don't have a child restraint on top of this, don't go nuts because if you tip it right upside down, they'll all go in and make it way too oniony for any man's taste. Maybe for an ogre's, but not for a man. Gently sprinkle the onions on top of your roast. This will add an oniony flavor that everyone in the family will enjoy. And because you're eating together, everyone's breath will smell the same. And nobody will be embarrassed of their oniony savor. What's this, Michael? Hold on! We're having a major breakthrough. Follow me to the laundry room. Brittany? I, I just found out the We've got a big bag of potatoes hiding in the dirty laundry room. It's okay if it's in the dirty laundry room, um, because we got a sink and we can clean I'll stuff up. This is my mom. dad. Wave the camera, Dad. So, now that we've got potatoes, uh -huh. you're going to want to open it up and take about a lot of potatoes, especially if you've got um, a big family. This, this is how poor families are. Not in an offensive way, but most of us are poor. I think. Where'd you put them? But you're going to want lots of potatoes. Rich or poor. Can we edit that part? So, anyway. Lots of potatoes is good. Uh, she said they're in the Walmart bag, the new onions. Because this will add to the carbohydrates that you stick inside of your body that you can work off and become manly and huge. So I took about eight or ten potatoes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten potatoes. Another break if I can't find Put the bag back when you're done with it. For now, I'm going to set it here just for the sake of time on this cooking out. Walmart bag and one. So. I'll give you one example of how we cut the potatoes as soon as I reach over up in here and get my cutting utensils. Oh yeah, thanks dude. So, what you're going to want is a shredder. 
Does anybody know where I put my metal shirt? Got it. You can use these if you didn't have baby carrots that were pre-cut. You can use one of these nifty little shredders. Not used for scalps. But it is used for carrots. And you can shave off the nasty dry skin that you don't want to digest. Or taste. Now this is a potato. Everybody say hi to Mr. Potato because he's about to be gone. Hi. Thanks. Now after you have Mr. Potato already cut up, I mean, we didn't do any cutting yet. What you're going to want to do is, while this potato is like this, shave off the skin. Gently do that without shaving any of your skin off. Because getting blood inside the food is not good, according to Leviticus. No one will want to eat blood with their food, because life is in the blood. Which we learned later when Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross. When he spilled out his blood, it meant life for us. Thank you, Jesus. It's always good to have a cooking assistant when you're on TV, especially if they're a good-looking assistant. But it's also good, especially if you have brothers or sisters, or if you're a mother and you've got children, it's always good to have somebody that can grab your cutting board. So I'd like to introduce you to my little brother, Joshua. Joshua! Oh, Joshua! Joshua! What? I'd like to introduce you to some of my friends. Hi, this is my little brother, Josh. Wave to the people, Josh. Okay, Josh, are you familiar with what a cutting board is? Yes. Could you please go under the kitchen sink and grab me a cutting board? Thank you very much. It's always good to have nice little brothers that will do what you request of them. Once he gets my cutting board and I shave all the skin off this potato, then I can start cutting. As you can see, this potato used to be brown, but now it kind of looks like a fresh apple because I shaved the skin off of it. So you just want to shave all the brown off. Well, thank you, Josh. I like this white one to start out with. You're a real friend. Now once you get the potato completely peeled of its skin, you're going to want to take a rather sharp knife, like this. And you're going to want to put it by the potato. What I do is I cut it in half first, like this. And then I put it flat side down and cut it once more. I do that with both halves. Then you would have a piece that looks like this. Then I put it on the flat side again, cut it in half hot dog style, one more time. Once you've done that, you want to throw it in the roast. And now for a brief commercial break while I finish the rest of these potatoes.
music playing. Welcome back to Moe's Cooking Hour. I hope you enjoyed those commercials thoroughly. So, now that we're done with potatoes, and I must correct myself, ladies and gentlemen, I said use ten potatoes. I only used four. Because my crock pot is getting pretty full. So with the six potatoes you have left over, put them back in the bag. Now it's time for the onions. Not these onions. These onions. An onion looks like this before you do anything to it. It's got little flaky layers of skin on it. And there's a nose. And there's a tail. I cut the nose and the tail off with the same knife that I cut with the potatoes. You don't have to wash off the knife in between cutting the potatoes and the onions. Because it's not like me. So, once you cut off the tail and the nose of the onion, you'll want to flake the layers of the onion off. Now, most women, when they're cooking, wear goggles or something, or glasses, to block the little cry babies from coming off of the onions and causing you to cry. But men, we will not wear goggles. We will cry. We will take off the skin of this onion and cut it up without wearing goggles. Because there's one thing I've learned in life. Well, let me rephrase that. One thing that I have learned in life is that real men cry. Even Jesus Christ himself wept in the Bible. In Mark 11, we're on in five. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so as I was saying, in Mark 11, 35, Jesus wept, so real men can weep. So now that we've got the onion all cut up, and I've already put most of it inside of the crock pot, your crock pot should look like this. I've got roast on the bottom, carrots on top of that, potatoes on top of that, and onions on top of that. I also put the onion soup powder mix inside of here. The onion soup powder mix I chose was made by Lipton, the same makers of that wonderful delicious tea that makes my mom smile. So, excuse me. So, now that we've got all the ingredients inside of the crock pot, we can put the lid on it. And I like to turn it up to low. Now, on my particular crock pot, if you could zoom in, camera dude, it says off, low, high, and warm. Josh, can you please point to the off? Off, low, high, and warm. Okay, now warm is only a setting that you want to use after everything's already cooked inside of the crock pot. Mm -hmm. Now, low and high, they're cooking speed. And off means nothing's happening with your roast. Please do not make your roast go to church and leave the switch in the off position. Because when you get home, you will be highly dissatisfied that your house doesn't completely smell like roast and man. So, I stick it on to low speed. Make sure that your crock pot is plugged in. Unless it's battery powered. But most crock pots in the world, you plug it. So... Plug it in, plug it in, to the wall. After that, switch it to the low cooking position, as you see I have done. Oh, this is going to smell so good when I get back. Thank you for joining us for the first episode of Most Manly Cooking Hour, where we have just made a delicious, wonderful roast to feed the multitude. Peace of Jesus on you. And we'll see you next time. Wave goodbye, Josh. <laughs>